the Army Blues. Hello! Okay, I think we're going to start this. Um, let me know how the sound is, as I'm just hoping that with a little bit louder, this is going to be, um, that this is going to be a little bit, the audio might be better. I don't know. I've, I've tried the music in the background too low, and it sounds like it's not great and too high. Cuts me off. So we're gonna just try some things out. Um, hey, how's it going? Sound is good, okay. We're gonna keep the sound right here, not touching a thing. Um, anyways, uh, as you guys have probably may have been following my progress on this so far, um, I actually finished this guy up and made him print ready. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, how to make something print ready before we get into my next project. So we'll probably take, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to talk about that. Feel free to ask questions. If you have questions, ask a ton of questions. Um, I'll do my best to make up answers for them. 
And if you guys are new to ZBrush, or just feel free to scope along with me if you know ZBrush, um, there is a free trial that they just added down below. Down below. Um, that you can do a free trial, which is kind of cool. So, um, what? So now that I have this guy finished, you know he's far from what I wanted this to be, but I needed. I had a deadline, stuck to the deadline, um, and now we're just going to move on. It is what it is, and we're going to move on. Um, so, the first thing. Good night. Love you, son. Good night, easy. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. I'll close out for you. My boys. Um, where's, where do I suggest you get something printed? Okay, so I suggest um, 3dhubs.com. So 3D Hubs is is a uh, it just kind of shows where local 3D printers are, um, and you can kind of find someone that has a high res printer or a medium res printer, you know, something that that has good reviews, and you can actually send them files and they'll print them for you at, at pretty good prices if you can find the right person. I've had a few of my stuff printed at various printers, like this dude was printed through a printer I found in 3D Hubs um, that was just local. Um, so, or if you want like something really nice, find someone that has a Form 2 printer and get it printed through them. If you're just looking for like a one-off. Um, aw, those are my kids. They're super sweet. Okay, so for this dude, um, I didn't take any time to poly paint him. That's not the purpose of what this was. Um, anyone that has followed my... Uh, previous things know a little bit about what I'm doing. So the, the main things that I want to do is I want to make keys so they all... So this guy's not printing in one shape because he's got so many overhangs. Like, you print this foot and there's like a billion overhangs, 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 and then his head overlaps. So they'd be, there would be supports from here to here, here to here, here to here and then supports on this, like really, really high supports, which is just really wasting a lot of material. So you want to cut them up um, with Dynamesh and make keys out of them. So I've already done that, and I'll show you, I'll do one example, I'll do one example, but I want to show you what our end goal is. So, here this guy's actually already split up. So if I move this leg, you actually see, I'm going to solo mode, that there is a key in there, um, and his inside is cut out. So that way, I'm going to save my project. I should change my save time. It'll be a little bit longer. Um, so that way, it'll just slide right back in, and look, there's a little spot cut out already to place that leg. So if I go back and put it in, you see that it very very closely it's just the cutout that I did is just a little bit bigger than the insert and that's it and I did that for every part all the limbs and I tried to do it places where you could hide the seams like where the folds are you know here um, on the body I actually cut out inside the shoulder so you you wouldn't notice the big seam like and it was kind of getting awkward when you cut so much in like that um so you wouldn't really notice some of these things yeah so they lock together um that way you have something to like hold on to so to build something like that um we'll do an, an example with this guy's leg so the first thing i do is i'm going to make a duplicate of the body so duplicate of the body um, I'm gonna, for time's sake, because my computer is slow. My computer is coming, by the way. I'm just waiting on one thing. Oh, you saw the publication in our station. Yeah, so this is how I made it. Um, 
So, the first thing I do is I take the body, make a duplicate of it, because this is what I'm going to use to make the cutouts. And I know that I want this body to cut out this le these legs in these different parts, right? So, first thing I do, let's delete higher. Um, I'm going to drop this subtool so it's just beneath that foot. So where's the foot? Right here, okay. Leggy two. Um, and let's actually dynamesh the, the toes into that. We're gonna split hidden. Take these toes and put them into that. So I want this to be one piece. I don't want the toenails to be something different. So that's why I'm dynameshing everything that I want to be printed in one piece together. So print, uh, or not print, uh, merge down. Okay. Oh, I did the wrong ones. Um, undo that. There they are. Okay, merge down. Okay, there we go. You'll see that it's um, it's they're all separate polygroups right now. So I'm going to just hit Control W, make them one polygroup. This is just for ease purposes. And now I'm going to Dynamesh these together. Um, I'm going to use Dynamesh Master because it's a little bit more controlled. Just do Dynamesh Master, and what this is going to, you know, Boolean everything together, merge everything together so it's a seamless mess. A mess? It's a seamless mess. It's a seamless mesh. Um, so now they're all together. You see if I if I try to smooth this, the toes will actually, you know, smooth out. See? Um, so now that I have that, I want to subtract. And there's a couple things I want to do. So first I want to subtract this body out of out of this um, and so I take the body this is the subtool with the body the duplicate subtool that I made and then I'm gonna click on this little semicircle you know the semicircle with the grayed out circle which shows that this is gonna be the subtract piece and the key thing that you have to remember is that this is a smaller poly count the subtracted piece than what you're cutting out so this is the main piece that I want the piece cut out of and this is what I want it to be cut out so I take that and so this is higher and now I just make sure that this is beneath it do a merge down and you'll see that the the cutout piece the part that's going to subtract is all in white um, is there a tool to make that or is that just something that you have so it's really easy, I'll explain that, um, Kenji, right here. So first I'm going to subtract this, and do, and I'm going to just use my same Dynamesh Master, and hit Dynamesh. And what's this, what this is going to do, it's going to subtract out just that part, and give me a new brand new leg piece that isn't penetrating, um, isn't penetrating the skin. Here it comes. Boom. Okay. So now if we look at it, we get this topology, which is perfectly cut out next to the body. Um, so it will fit in right next to the duplicate body that we made. Right here. So it's, it's going to fit perfectly in there with all the grooves and everything. But now you need to make that key that will go insert. So this is the, this is where it might get a little tricky. So I go in to this one, and I'm going to make a key. And keys are simple; they just have to be a unique shape with a taper in it. They don't even have to have a taper. I like to have a taper to mine, and so I just use one of these insert primitive cube mesh that I made. Um, okay, so just use this mesh and I'm going to use a simple cube with no splits so this is just 
four-sided cube, or a six-sided cube, a six-sided cube. So I'm just going to click and draw. Make sure that this is penetrating a little. And it doesn't matter really how much. And then, um, what I'm going to do is just manually taper it. So just with the move brush, just manually bring these sides in so it has a nice taper to it. Go back to that. So you can see the key that I've just made. Um, really simple, not a lot of detail, but this will now go into the leg. So I'll dynamesh these two pieces together before I do anything else. Hey, Stadius. Um, so now I've dynamished these two pieces together, but now I need to cut this shape out of the new, this body, right? Because this needs that key. So I'm going to go back to this foot this time. Where is my new foot? So I go back to this foot this time. Um, I'm going to duplicate this foot and I'm going to um, turn on transparency. And let's just turn on this foot and the. So I just have the, the duplicate and that foot together. Um, and I'm just going to go down to deformations and go to inflate and inflate it until it's just a little bit bigger than the original. It doesn't have to be that much bigger. Um, a little bit of wiggle room is good though. So like if you can kind of see it there, let's see if I can get a better angle on that. Right there, so you see it's just barely bigger than um, the original piece. So then I take this new duplicate enlarged piece that I just inflated, I'm gonna go up, put this right beneath uh, my master body, right? Making sure that this that there's more points um, in the one in the piece that I want cut out, and then the piece that I'm cutting out has to be smaller. So that one's three million. This is almost a million. Turn that cut on cut on piece on. Do a merge down. So you'll see merge down. So put them together. Um, let's turn off that other leg. You can see what's going on. So this is white, so it's worked. And now, I just run the Dynamesh again. And it's going to subtract this out, um, and keep my body looking great. Because I work out! <laughs> I know what you mean, Metal Hay. That I I waste or no, I don't waste, but I watch a lot of these videos because they've been so like, excellent. So now I have got this body with the cutout piece that's slightly larger than my original foot, which is right here. So if you look real real closely you'll see you'll see that seam just a little bit and you know it's probably showing up big here but once you print it it's probably not going to be seen at all um, you know you're printing it at roughly the size of this pen that like six inches max you're not going to see a seam that that small um, so you've got to keep that in mind and so um, just so you can see that again scroll in here And I'm just going to move this out a little bit. Let's go over here so we can see it. The key things to remember is nothing that can't, it's got a taper to go in. You can't have anything smaller that's going to penetrate. So you see that's just working perfectly.
just show you your cutout. Um, show double. So now you see that this piece is just fitting that just perfectly and super. I mean, you can make these keys. I made these keys in in you know 20 minutes for all of them. Once I did that, and it was it was fine. And so then I uh, you know the end result is this. So let's get let's get to it. I'm gonna just do like the the key points of of um, printing. So this guy. Oh man, there's so much good stuff to do. Okay, so in the end, the guy's gonna look like this if I can do it right. Yeah, that's my hit. Shift X. So this guy is all split up. You can see the keys. Um, I've got a hidden key in the bottom of this foot here. It's attached to this to the skateboard there. Um, the neck will go into there, the arms will go into there, like, it's a pretty simple print, actually, but, um, it's, it was kind of, it was a lot of fun. Um, the one things, a couple of things you want to keep in mind is you want, when you take this to print, um, one, I use a ruler, so this is a ruler that I know is 12 inches or, a, or 305 millimeters, um, this is a tool that I normally bring in, and I I killed the poly paint on it when I decimated it, but it's actually um, precise. So then I can measure this and have this ruler as my my guide when I export, saying that the tallest point is that. Um, so once you have you know these parts in, I'm going to bring this into a 3D program or a printing prepping program like Slicer or with Form. The Form 2 has its own proprietary, Form Labs has its own proprietary stuff. So instead to keep um, detail like this, it's on the bottom of the skateboard, I'm just going to, I would turn this, flip it upside down so it prints, um, it prints on this side. So it actually will be printed more or less like this. So all the supports go underneath where you're not going to see any of the detail and then the detail areas stay clean. And so you're not doing a bunch of, you know, fine cleanup, it's just a little cleanup. So that's basically what I'm doing for printing wise. Um, does anybody have any, do you guys have any questions about 3D printing before we switch gears? We're going to do something completely different. Um, and so that's it. So this this guy uh, is free to print if you want to go to uh, pinshape.com and then just look up the red beard. Um, this gator's on there for free and you can print them on your own printer or you can take them somewhere to be printed. Um, I just put them up for free because he was just something fun that I wanted to do. So um, when the prints, I've been getting a couple of these prints done. When they're in, I'll I'll keep one and I'm going to give one away. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, but anyways, I'm going to switch subjects now. Let's see what we got here. Yes. I'm going to kill ZBrush and then restart it. So we can talk about this gal. This is a wonderful song. There we go. Uh, 
Uh, Mac. I'm about one more week. Hopefully next week I'll have my new computer up and going. So that's going to be a screaming beast. Mmm, a screaming beast indeed. Okay. So first thing that we're going to do is, so we're going to make this character over the next probably the next three sessions um and yeah it's hockey girl so this is part you know this is a design that i did uh a couple days ago and it's oh what kind of computer am i getting i am getting um, I'm building my own computer so i ordered the new um, amd ryzen uh, 1800X qua, uh, eight core chip, you know, 64 gigs of RAM, awesome, awesome uh, killer graphics card, the 1080X um, graphics card. The you know, this thing is a beast. It's a beast, and so happy to put it together. Should be pretty fun. Um, never done it before, but should be pretty fun. She has no boobs. Oh no! I hate big boobs on characters. So she's going to have small boobs. And I'm going to like it. Um, so let's talk about the character design because there's a really, there's a purpose before all this. Um, so I'm, I've studied character design for many years as a character artist at Disney and a character artist before Disney and a character artist now at a company called Chair. Um, I've heavily, heavily focused in character design and character design principles and developing characters that have relatable, um, interesting things to them that are story-driven, story-driven characters. Um, so for this, that's what I wanted to do for this stream is, is do something that's very a story-driven character, something that has personality, something that's different from what you see every day. Um, especially with female characters um, <laughs> and so I, I had this idea that I wanted to do like a zombie hunter like a zombie you know a girl that's caught in in the zombie apocalypse and she's having the time of her life she loves it uh, you know she's a hockey, hockey player um, and so she's got her trusty old goalie hockey stick and her hockey pads and you know she's she has a gun that she's never used <laughs> because she keeps bashing people with it um so there's a story that i wanted to tell with this and there's some um focusing points let me get oh boy get my drawing pencil Somehow these always like just end up shifting around on me. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the ideas that I wanted to, so I know the idea is what I want to do, and I want to translate that with shape, language, and form. Um, so there's three main shapes. When you're talking about character design, there's a triangle. Oh, this is a horrible triangle. Yeah, you know, there's the triangle, there's the circle, and there's the square. And they all mean different things. And I talk about this in my own drawing to or in my own um, character design tutorial, so I don't go too heavily into it. But basically, I wanted to focus something that was a little bit on the triangle side and a little bit on the circular side because they both have things that I wanted to talk about that, that I felt like this girl could go or maybe this triangle and um, yeah let's say the triangle and the square so if you look at her she's all tapered like a triangle you know even from here she's still she's very triangular like her the dimensions that we have um, but she also is mixed with soft shapes 
to kind of show that she's this funny, she's more of a comic relief. She is kind of broody, so she is a little bit more square too, but it's more soft shapes. Um, they roll into one another instead of, you know, sexy or lean. I wanted her to feel like she is kind of, bur you know, girthy. And she's mixed with these harsh shapes as well. So you've got soft shapes, harsh shapes, you know, more soft shapes to harsh shapes, um, more to soft and then back to harsh. Like instead of doing like a sexy leg, which is more, you know, tapered and, and maybe a little bit harsher and not as extreme, extreme, um, that's a leg. Ooh. Anyways, um, so instead of going sexy, I wanted her to show that she was more, you know, buff. Like she was, she's a goalie, so she's got to be sturdy. She's more sturdy than that. Um, was I a good drawer before starting ZBrush? Am I a good drawer now? <laughs> um, no! I, I have always done art. I, you know, so I probably was okay. I still don't think that I'm a great artist, but I can interpret what I want in 3D well. So what this is lacking in, three, in 2D, I'll make up for in 3D. Um, but it's something that I'm striving to do because understanding 2D design principles really helps my 3D work. So it's something that I'm still trying to constantly develop, still trying to hone in on and get better at. I draw every single day um, before I start with 3D. So I recommend that. I recommend you draw all the time. Anyways, so for this gal, um, before I bring her into ZBrush and so start modeling her, because actually this is a fairly, it's not too far off a T-pose, <laughs> to be honest, um, but I can simplify it just enough to like, I'll find I want to find the T-pose, maybe. Or at least the proportions. So, if we just... Woohoo! How did that happen? I've got, like, this one pencil brush that I like to... to draw in. And I'm losing it. Um, so just to like map out her proportions, you know, just, I'm sketching out, you know, the main landmarks. So I'll take this, you know, let's get this just a little bit better. What's my job background? Oh, okay. Um, oh, let's, I'm, I've missed all this chat. Okay, let's see. Uh, the daughter of Casey Jones <laughs> in April. Thanks. Um, yes, basically that's what I'm going for. Except for she's whacking aliens or whacking zombies. Um, oh, nice. Uh, what's my background? So I... My background as an artist, before I did 3D, I was a graphic designer for five years. Uh, I did, I specialized in, in illustrative logos and then I moved into websites and I mean, I was doing everything that you could possibly think of in graphic design. I was programming, I was building, I was 
doing everything. Um, did that for about five years and decided that it was time for me to move into the world of 3D. So I found a school um, up in Seattle, did that for nine months, which was awesome. Um, came back and got a job at this little company called React Games, where I was a character artist. I was an all-around art artist for them. I did everything. I made their website. I made all the UI for all their webs, all their games. I was a character artist. I was an environment artist. I was anything that they needed. Um, it was it was good and bad all at the same time. Um, and then I worked at Disney Interactive for um, three years where we worked on the Disney Infinity game where I made characters like this and all the characters are gone. All my kids have stolen them, but I've, you know, they didn't take a few of them. So I, I'm, you know, did that for a while, felt like it was time to move on and joined with a company called Chair Entertainment and we're working on a really cool project right now that I can't really talk about. I can just say that it's named Spy Jinx and it's awesome. Um, so, that's my background. Um, nice, you're conveying as much as you care about... Nice, so you're conveying as much as you can, can about the character personality through shape and design. Yes, exactly, Kinchi. I'm trying to convey a message with all the shapes and designs that I'm putting in there. So it's not just an attractive character, an appealing character. The shapes themselves talk about who the character is, so there's... So you don't have to have, you don't necessarily put a story to her. People look at this and they come up with their own story of what's going on. Yes, that is with JJ. JJ's um, partnered with Chair to develop this idea and it's been awesome. So we're super stoked. Um, hopefully we'll be releasing some more information soon-ish. I have no idea though. Um, maybe one day we'll release more information. But right now, it's, it's awesome, and it's been a great project. Um, so anyways, I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to start flushing out um, the T-pose, because I'm going to model this girl in T-pose. I did my last character, that crocodile, all in, asymm all in asymmetry, um, and I learned a lot from it. But it's not the fastest way to do things. <laughs> so right now I'm just setting up um, some layers to, to draw over so I can get, you know... She's got more of a broad chin. Maybe we'll figure out the face shape a little bit. Um, first, I'm doing the, the main landmarks. So... You know, I know this isn't going to be exact. I could bring this into, like... Um, sketchbook pro and and you know figure it out there I think these are a lot wider and this is really I'm just getting like block shapes for this maybe to bring this down Um, how hard was it to land a job after those nine months in school? Did your five years of graphic design help you expose yourself in the industry and help you land a 3D? Any advice for those hoping to make it in the industry after we're done with school? That is a great question. Um, so I, I worked super, I just worked my butt off in school. Like 
I worked so hard when after I was at school and it was just a 3D program so we were just doing 3D the whole time and um, so that's all I focused on was 3D for nine months. This hand. That's that's supposed to be a hand. <laughs> um, so I just focused on 3D for nine months, and coming back, um, I did have graphic design kind of as my fallback. But within about three weeks, I mean, I sent my my portfolio out to in Utah. I'm in Utah, by the way. There's not a whole lot going on in. Um, there's not a whole lot going on in the game industry or movie industry or 3D field. So I just sent my portfolio out everywhere. Luckily there was a studio that contacted me back. Oh boy. Oh, that's good enough um and so i put my stuff out there and luckily there was a, a job that was looking for an immediate you know general artist and i actually they were just looking for a temp um for a intern and i jumped at the position um they hired me on full time without a, after a couple of weeks but i was working like so hard to get my portfolio out of place before i started applying so I wasn't sending out a bunch of crap. I actually had like some decent pieces. And that was the key thing that we focused on in school was before you start applying after you graduate, make sure you have three killer pieces, um, at least three killer pieces that show what you can do. Um, because if you have, if you're sending out like two okay pieces and one piece of crap, People are going to look at that piece of crap and be like, oh, this guy sucks. But if you have three, you know, you're only as good as your worst portfolio piece. So make sure it's really, it's, it's better to have three pieces that are awesome than 20 pieces that are okay or that, you know, five pieces are okay and then 15 suck. So, you know, grooming your own portfolio, I think, is, is really helpful. Um, and so I would recommend that is just make sure you have a good portfolio and that you're not applying for jobs too, sh too soon and don't be afraid to like take the first job that comes your way. If it's, even if it's not, um, your dream job. Okay, there we go. So I'm just saving uh, a reference image that I'm going to bring into ZBrush. So this is T-Pose. What do I mean about applying too soon? Um, you don't want to apply to jobs if your portfolio is not ready. If like you may be ready and your skills may be there, but if you have a crappy portfolio, you're not going to get in anywhere. And the second or third time they see you is that's going to, that's going to say a lot that, you know, they're, they're already going to dismiss you remembering that you have a crappy portfolio and they saw you the first time. So just make sure your portfolio is good um, before you, you get on that. Um, 
Would you ever share images of your what your portfolio look like? Oh, uh, let's see. Let's go down memory lane. <laughs> I bet I can find them. I bet there's one place that still has them. Uh, I had an okay portfolio. Um, so this was in my portfolio. Uh, let's see. This was one of my portfolio pieces, was this dragon that I did. Um, this was in my portfolio. This guy. This little... I should go back and finish this guy. Because he was starting to be really cool, and I still love that idea. Um, let's see what else was in my portfolio. Oh, and I had... I think this guy was in there, too. Hold on. This guy was in there, and and then I had a couple prop, like fully rendered props that I did. Um, and I don't think those are on anywhere because I didn't want to be an environment artist, so I think I took those off long ago. So I think those are three of the four that I had on there. Um, I might have had one more character that was fully uh, rendered and 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 um, topologized like an in-game character. So, so that's basically what you need is just three or four kick-ass pieces, and you'll be noticed. Um, okay, so now before jumping into 3D. There's a few things that I want is how I'm going to build this character. Let's change colors here. Is the first thing I want to do is I'm, I'm kind of plotting out the landmarks of this character. Was all that in 3D? I started Maya back in 99. ZBrush wasn't even conceived back then. <laughs> um, most of that was all 3D, or it was, was ZBrush. Um, I think there was... I mean, the, the shark robot was actually like half ZBrush, half Maya. Um, the, the rest of it, I think, was all ZBrush. Yeah. Street Sharks was awesome. <laughs> I love street, street Sharks. So anyways, um, what I'm going to be doing, first off, is I'm going to block this in with simple shapes. Um, I'm going to be plotting out the landmarks. And the key landmarks is going to be, um, you know, the big forms first, which is uh, the rib cage, the and the pelvic bone, and the head. Like I want to, I want to get those in there first, and then I start want to start blocking out the other forms, like you know, the shoulders, the arms, things like that. But I want to start hinting at where these human landmarks are to start making her feel like real anatomy. So there's the clavicle that I want to make sure I have, um, the uh, chromial process, which is just above the clavicle, just behind the clavicle. Um, I want to have the sternum, the hints of the eighth rib. I guess the eighth rib is down here. So like the clavicle, the sternum, um, you want to have the ASIS, like the the anterior, inferior, so whatever, and with, like the iliac crest, um, 
the pubic, or the pu the pelvic, the pelvic, the pubic. <laughs> Gross. The pelvic, um, the pelvis, I should say. Um, the great trochanter, uh, the patella um, area, you know, the elbow, wrist, things like that. In the back, I want um, the shoulder blades and just like these key landmarks, you know, this, the, the line of the tibia, these, these subtly key landmarks, you know, I don't want her, her, gen, her, um, anatomy to be too realistic. I just want there to be hints of it. And by putting in these landmarks, um, we'll be able to do that. Okay. To ZBrush. Ha 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 ha. Um, first thing I want to do before I do anything is get my reference images in here. So by importing the two images that I have, um, zombie hunter, Let's see if I can bring both of these in. Okay, so I'm going to just add these to my shadow box. And just dock them here on the side. So I'll scale this gal. Just throw her over here as reference. Um, scale this thing up. And the fun thing I can do is I can kill the background. I can't really do it on this because there's no solid shape behind her. Um, but if I go to paint and hold control and alt, I can just it may work. Oh, you know, I might have too many lines. Let's try that again. Oops. Let's reset these. Paint. Kill one side, then I'll kill the other. And I'm just holding Control and Alt, um, and then with Paint selected, I'm just dragging a little bit, killed it away. So um, now I can just let's scale this over. We'll put this one on top. Keep this one on the bottom. So I'm knowing my reference of like what I'm actually going for and my general reference for my t pose. Yes, anatomy is great. Anatomy is something that I'm kind of self-teaching right now. Um, I'm thinking about doing an anatomy course down in Vegas. The Anatomy for Sculptors course, which I've heard great things about. And then last, so hit Z to turn it off, but the last thing I want to do before I get into this, because some functions won't work like the smooth, if I don't do this, so like, if I'm, uh, make it 3D, so if I sculpt, like some things won't work, you know, like for some reason the j cut brush kind of works, but smoothing doesn't work. Um, because I don't have this turned off. So I've got to go back under brush, samples, spotlight projection, turn that off. And now everything works the way it should. Hello, Mr. Caps. Richard McDonald? Yes, I think so. Yeah. So you draw the proportions, then sculpt off that. Is the Yeah, it is actually. You know, it depends. It depends. Sometimes I'll just go off this. For the you know, for these purposes, it's 
just showing you kind of what I'm going going for and how I got the proportions um, is just showing you kind of my steps. I can kind of do this in my head now, but Scotty, oh Scotty Eaton does have a great course. How do um, how did you do the background of the reference, the white color? Oh, so back to that. So if you it hit Z, select paint, control plus alt, tap on the color you want to delete, and just do a drag. And the more you drag, the more is deleted. Matt, how is your computer equipment for Amazon? You know, okay. Artist future, yes. Um, so, uh, to make a long story short and embarrassing, um, turns out it was just extremely well hidden in my backyard. Um, uh, three days later, so I thought my computer parts were stolen, um, and it turns out that the delivery guy hit them really well and went to the side of our house moved our grill out of the way, hid everything behind the grill, way in the back of our yard. And when I went to look in our backyard and I didn't see anything, I thought, this has been stolen. And so three days later, I walk outside to go check. There was a dog in our backyard for some reason, a whole other story. Um, and there are all of our packages. Everything there has been sitting there for three days. Um, so... Yeah, that's the story. Anyways, I have everything except for my processor and my motherboard, um, which are coming right. They're being shipped today because uh, it was released today. So thanks for asking. No rain. No, it was all covered. Um, there were some freezing temperatures, but I think we're okay because the liquid cooling stuff uh, doesn't freeze. So I'm hoping everything's okay. Um, I'll have to check, I'll have to check out Richard McDonald. I think it was the Scott Eaton. I can't remember what class I was looking at. I'll look at both of those. Um, <laughs> yes, it was a scavenger hunt. <laughs> and, um, Roy, Roy, yes. All these videos are saved on Pixelogic's page here under their, their videos. Um, so you can check this out later too. So, let's get into it. Enough talking. Okay, let's actually go up a little bit higher with this first ball. Beauty. Okay, so I like to start off with just a really small um, ball. And make sure Symmetry is turned on. And let's just. Okay. This is the front. So, first thing, I'm just going to start blocking out in the rib cage. Do some um, clipping curve stuff too along the way. I always start to make things like too thick, so I'm going to try to fix that. Um, okay, then I'm just going to duplicate this. Uh, 
um, you know, now morph this into kind of that uh, um, the pelvic bone shape. Yeah, anatomy is for sculptors. Um, that's is that. Let me just make sure. I think this is the site, the place that I was looking at. Because I have their book, the Anatomy for Sculptors book, which is awesome. Um, yeah, feel free to sculpt along. So just roughly kind of placing some of these key landmarks that, that I know, like, if I don't have now, then I'm going to be lost, you know, later. Kind of check proportions, because I know right now they're way off. So checking these proportions a little bit you know i want like the point of the asis you know correct which is going to be like right there hey kyle hey everyone it's kyle everyone say hi to kyle kyle's the man Probably as far as I want to go with that. Um, and now I want the head shape too. So this time I'm actually just going to take one of these insert dealies and just draw out a head. So, so this is just a mesh, a simple insert mesh brush that I made, um, which has all of the uh, Z modeler primitives in it. It's nothing special. It took me two seconds to make. Um, anyways, so you know, drop that up. Oops. Start pulling out some shapes a little bit. And flatten the sides of the head. Um, it was really cool working on the Moana Disney Infinity figure. Um, Because I got the opportunity to like uh, talk with the lead animator um, Hiram Osman about you know the Disney feature creative like their process. Just put in some landmarks of like where maybe the eye brow ridge would be. Just subtle, subtle things like mm -hmm. kind of a hint of where the cheekbones will start going. Hoodie ordered, oh yeah. Ooh, 
what happened to our what happened to our jazz? Okay. And again, like I'm not spending a ton of time. Mainly, I just want all those landmarks to be there. This head's looking already too big. So I can go over, check everything. And I, I like to check things by the rib cage, believe it or not. Maybe it's not too big. Maybe it's not big enough. Okay. Um, and so now that I have like the core landmarks in there, I can kind of do the rest. And I'm still thinking about like these shapes where the arches are, the continuous shape of you know, from her waist you know, all the way out to her thigh and then back into the knee. Um, I'm thinking about those. So, and I'll just be using mostly simple spheres and just moving them and pushing them into place. Just like that. Ooh. And obviously these are too high. separate pieces too. I'm gonna to bring that in. It's got a thick knee. And though like I'm not doing a ton of like I'm not necessarily worried about the anatomy right now. I'm just doing hints of of landmarks like the great trochanter and Like the point of the point of the the A the A S I S, um, and then you know the sacrum will be sacrum, sacrum, sacrum. We'll be back there. Hey, thanks for coming by. start getting some of that like personality of like the, the S curve in there. So it's hidden. I'm just going to do one side. Um,
And I'm still like worrying right now about keeping a curve on one side, flat on the other, curve on one side, flat on the other. Let's turn down these opacity a little bit. You can see that I can grow that just a little bit, but mainly it's fairly close. Um, and then I'll just do a Dynamesh, as now I'm kind of getting things into place, and things are getting really warped, and I want just a better flow. If I do a Dynamesh at a low, or Dynamesh and keep groups on, um, I'll still be able to have control but I can smooth things out a little bit Um, for someone wanting to get into making figures, toys, collectibles, statues, any advice? Um, yes, I have, I, it's something that I've been doing for a long time, even before Disney. Um, and it was actually one of the, le the reasons I wanted to get into, uh, the 3D in the first place was with that, like, potential of, oops. That potential of uh, doing toys and, and figure like 3D figures. Um, so my advice is just start doing it. <laughs> um, these are two like once I got out of school. These are two of the the things that I just made on my own, um, just because I wanted to get into 3D printing. So I made this guy and then this pug which has a monster coming out of his back for some reason um, and I just started playing around with it because it interested me and I wasn't going to get an opportunity to do it at work and I wasn't going to get an opportunity to really do it at school per se um, so you kind of have to take you kind of have to take things into your own hands sometimes to be honest and like okay if if this is what I want to do, and I'm not currently doing it at work, then at home I'm going to teach myself how to make a 3D, how to make a 3D printable character. Um, what goes into making a nice 3D, 3D character? Um, what are the downfalls, you know? So there's just things that like... You kind of have to learn by doing. Big, thick, almost like tree trunks.
So just start doing it. Look up forms. Look up. Uh, you know how to make 3D characters. There's a bunch of different things, a bunch of different assets out there. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Artso. Art stuff. Art stuff. That's right. Um, always a pleasure. Like really, the the reason I I got any of the jobs that I have is by doing work on my own time. You know, the going the extra mile when when my job didn't necessarily require any of that with of me. Um, So by taking the time and like forcing yourself to learn something or to do something, I mean, you'll be surprised at how many opportunities all of a sudden just open up. Matt! The Pixel Logic is here? The Pixel Logic? I like the, the Pixel Logic. So that's basically how I got into 3D printing. Is just I wanted to do characters of my own. Um, I had followed, you know, Kid Robot for years. I've got a bunch of Kid Robot toys. Uh, Joe Ledbetter was a big inspiration to like. I wanted to do what he was doing, pretty much. Um, and he's he's a oops, he's a fantastic uh, art toy designer. I actually got to meet him at Designer Con this past year, which was really, really cool. Um, just whip out some feet. They just have to be feet. <laughs> Probably just Kingsley. Of course it's Kingsley by disguise. Who else would it be? Sneaky Kingsley. So if any of you guys are new to ZBrush or like wondering... What is this program? Why? Why? What is he doing? Why would he do that? Um, I don't know why I'm doing would do that. That's a great question. That requires a lot of self uh, diagnoses. Um, but there is a free trial down below um, in the description of ZBrush if you guys want to do that and you can sculpt along. Sometimes it's just the best to do that. It's just sculpt along. Roll arch. There we go. Again, trying to save details where I can, so not really putting too much there. Um, and this whole time I have perspective off as I'm just trying to get proportions down. Head just slightly bigger. Notice like the curves. I'm already developing a curve from the back of the spine, following up to the front of the thigh, which will curve, you know, back down to the back of the heel. So you have this nice swoosh motion the whole time. 
how long will I be going on tonight? I'll be on for another hour and a half. Um, so, so roughly an hour and a half longer. <laughs> URC has some good anatomy classes. That's true. Ryan Kingsley, Ryan Kingsland, Ryan Kingsland is, he is like the god of anatomy. That guy knows so much anatomy. Um, it's hard. I've, I've done a couple of his uh, webinar stuff, and it's, he's great at teaching it. He really is. He's got, he's a passion, he's got a passion for it. Um, it is a little daunting, though, when he speaks just so much in anatomy that, you you're trying to pick out like what do you, what is the important information that I need from this? Um, but he's excellent. I I really like Ryan and I really like his class his classes. Okay, so this is where the shoulder would be. Yes, get the trial. And there's um, there's some great resources. Um, also, imagine uh, on the ZBrush Classroom or Pixelogic.com, and then you go to ZBrush Learning or what do you call it? Kyle will post the link to it. There's some great online resources that are all like free that they provide for learning uh, ZBrush. They'll give you a quick um, starting guide on like how to start to be a master of the ZBrush. Just trying to give some taper here. I mean, this muscle will, will do that as well, but I actually don't want that to be so high. But I do want this to roll forward because that's how the muscle actually rolls in over that. Let's do measurements real quick again. Okay. 
Okay. Ah, the Z classroom. Thank you. Senior Kingsley, yes. He is the master of all. Thicken it up a little bit. Oh man, I, lo I lost all this. <laughs> First, they hook you with the trial. <laughs> yes, Z Rush is so addicting. It is the friggin' best. Okay. And we'll see if I can get this forearm the way I want. I have a puffy forearm. And the way that I can kind of manipulate these and not touch really the other things. I'm going to have to find this elbow just a little bit in this process. Is uh, just by turning mass by polygroups on, which normally you find in the brush, um, auto masking, and here. And I just have a slider that I put on my custom UI to do that. Oh, I should do a save. Why aren't I saving? <laughs> ZBrush. Z Hunter. Let's see here. Sorry, you're keeping an eye on who's selling Nintendo Switches. <laughs> I am so close to just pulling the trigger on that. I want, like, the Nintendo Switch speaks to my heart. I'm just like, that close, just that close, just give me one more reason and we'll push it over. Um... No, that's not awesome. That's that's not true. Yeah, I'm still thinking a lot about silhouette and what's reading well and what's not. So sometimes I'll just turn it into flat mode so I can really start seeing. And I'm thinking about zigzags when I'm thinking about arcs, by the way. Um, so if you look at the leg, it's it's got a high point here. It will come down. There will be a subtle high point here. Come down again. I want that high point on that. 
on this calf muscle um, to be here really taper down and then there's going to be a subtle high point there where it starts to taper back in again uh, I've been on the fence too anyone else going to try and get one tonight a bunch of people at work are getting them does that count and also Kyle since we work I work for a chair which is owned by Epic which makes the game engine Unreal if any of you have heard of it um, this is the first time they've put Unreal working on a Nintendo system and so we've had we've actually had a switch in our office for quite a while um, and I've known about it long before the announcement well, I didn't know what it looked like. I knew it was going to be cool, though. But we've had it in our office since the annou they announced what it was. Which is kind of fun. So no games. Just the engine. But we have... I have played around with it a little bit. And it was really cool. Okay. Um, let's do one for the hand, too. And this is just going to be like a mitt hand for now. Um, I'm going to try a new technique that I've thought about. Hands are going to be so big. This is beautiful. Um, yeah, I think this is the first time Unreal Engine has been on any Nintendo console. Yeah. Um, which is cool, because normally they, they force their developers to use... Uh, their own stuff. They're, you know, the Nintendo proprietary whatever, and that's why the majority of game developers don't don't do it, is because they don't like working with Nintendo stuff. They don't like working um, that, you know, to to be so constricted on what they are doing. So, but, you know, with the Switch, to see that their Nintendo is actually making their effort to to try to go after more of, like, a core gamer is, is really cool. Then there's that poop.
probably should have done polish, but I guess we'll still get away with what we have. Um, Oh man, I kind of killed a lot of my thicknesses. I don't want her to have thin arms, I want her to have big thickies. Hey, that song. I don't know. This is a jazz mix from the Free Music Archive. <laughs> hey, thanks, Metal. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, check in. We're hopefully gonna have some fun this month with this girl. So, not that kind of fun, Kingsley. Ah, jeez, Louise. So now that I have, let's check out these proportions again. Um, this must be thicker. Thick, 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 thick. It does sound like the theme song from MASH. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why I heard, like, where I've heard that before.
Okay, I'm gonna do a mirror and weld so that it'll just mirror this info to the other side. Mirror weld. Oh, it actually merged them. Okay, so let's fix that just a pinch. I still want there to have like these super thick gams. Ah, success! This might be a little bit too far back. I'll, I'll worry about that later. Um, feet got corked. That's okay. Um, I have no idea who Carol Burnett is. Or the Carol Burnett show. <laughs> Ron Burgundy. Yeah, I am. So, can she ask? So, if you're looking, if you, so it looks like you're paying attention to how the mesh ingests and flow, especially the places like the forearms. Are you not really thinking? No, I am. I'm thinking about um, overall flow and how they inter intercept with each other, how they interact with each other. So, when I'm looking at this, like I can see flats, I can see high points and curves. Um, I need a little bit more here, but I'm going to worry about that. The hourglass shape is going to do, it's going to go big, it's going to go cross in, cross out, cross in, and this arc, this high point is high, it should be lower than this, so I'm going to fix that, so bring it down here, lower, um, but flats are on the insides, curves are on the outsides, you know, just working, working that out. So yeah, I, I'm thinking about how everything flows with each other right now. Not just plotting, you know, not just building a body, but actually thinking about the overall, um, the overall, like, gesture of it. Just tweaking some of this. Um... The pose a little bit, so it feels a little bit more natural. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not thinking about um, edge flow right now. Like, it does have the twist, though it's opposite of what it should be. No, that's the right, no, right twist. Um, I'm not really thinking about that right now, um, though it's kind of a good coincidence that it happens to be flowing that way. Um, I'm not really thinking about geometry right now, even though, like, that twist is correct, and that's what I want um, in the final geometry, but not this. This is all, I'm just thinking about shapes, forms, and silhouette. So, with this I want to kind of pull out maybe where that eighth rib is. Let's 
start hinting at some of these features. And I can start adding like the midsection. You know, maybe even like there's obviously room that I can add in geometry even at this point. So I can start defining some of these shapes. Like where the belly button might be. Um, I want the belly button actually to be a little bit higher on her. Can be like some defining areas of where like the sacrum would be and um, kind of the belly shape start hinting at some of this stuff is going to be like right there so knowing that like I can kind of cater around to different things Uh, let's see what we got here. Um, the conspiracy of, li of silhouette. <laughs> yes, the conspiracy of silhouette. Which actually I could push so much more. Um, let's do that. Because now I'm like seeing things together in their relationship. So just by doing that, I can start, you know, kind of working on the overall silhouette of this gal, um, seeing what's working, what's not working. It doesn't have to be perfect to this, as this is far from perfect. Um, yes. It looks like these thighs actually got thinner. I need to inflate them a little bit. That's better. And so you got that curve. Um, oops. How's it going, John, Ashley? I wait, is it Ashley? 
No, wait. John Adams? There it is. Dyslexic. How's it going? So, I keep some of these landmarks like this right there, the, the ASIS bone. Um, hints of where that eighth rib is. Um, this, the sacrum is going to be right here. You can't really tell, but like that's where it's going to be. I can start defining, kind of push this in a little bit to show where um, that muscle, uh, the, that spine is going to sink in. Um, run an auto group so I can just dynamesh this. It's not going to work. Huh. Auto group. Weird. Okay. Have something secretly hidden, secretly masked. What? Why is that going on? Um, for some reason, it's like dynamishing half of my deal. This is weird. And it's also keeping this. Let's try that. Let's try this. Why are you only dynamashing half of that? Oh, that's so weird. Any idea, guys, of why it's only dynamashing half? Do something. Duplicate. Sorry, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to like, sometimes if you just hit the 3D model, um, or hit make 3D, it kind of kills history or whatever on it, and sometimes that can just cause issues, so. Okay, so that's working now. We'll resave, we'll save over this. Two. Am I going to make her ankles bigger or her wrists smaller? Um, I want her... Oh, goodness, no. I actually... That is intentional. I want her wrists to be pretty thick and her... Um, and her ankles to be pretty small. Um, this is the concept that we're going for. Let's just open it again. Don't say... I always have reference up. I always have your reference up. Anyway, so this is the concept that I'm going for. Um, she's got. She's gonna have really small ankles, so I'll probably thicken up those ankles. Um, but I do want to keep her wrists and and um, forearms thick, as she's gonna be. She's gonna be a thicker gal. Too much thicker. I 
Oh, thanks. I'm giving her boobies. She's going to have boobies, but they're going to be small and they're going to be... They're going to serve a purpose as to help define who the character is. Um, again, I'm going for more of like an athletic-y, kind of like a female goalie type character with this. Oh, why am I... that's what's going on. Kind of defining some of these areas again that uh, that um, are some of the landmarks, like the clavicle right there, just hinting at it, um, having it come up to where the the and back the acromial processes right here, you know the high point of the shoulder, you know where that little bone can stick out. Sometimes the music just gets me. I'm keeping the boobies small. I hate big boobies on characters. Unless they serve a purpose for describing who that character is. Then I do not like big boobies on characters. I think it's dumb. <laughs> Like, to have sex, just to have sex, like, sex, you know, it most likely will make your character not look sexy with big boobs, it'll just make them look dumb. There's few artists that can get away with it, um, that can do it. I mean, not, they, there's, I understand the purpose of having big boobs on some characters, but not every character. What is this going on here? Someone looking down and someone looking up. It's kind of like... <laughs> you can't see my screen. But the comment from Zomax and AQ with the girl looking down and the guy looking up. It's like there's like a Hollywood moment going on right there. <laughs> fix these leggies. much for the 
feet as the feet will be really small and kind of not a super important thing. Just give me the shape. That's all I want is the shape. Um, let's add the boobies now. <laughs> For more boobies. <laughs> nice, Kingsley. <laughs> ah, just looking at boobies. Well, that's the face that I make when I look at boobies, too. I've got nothing... Let's get this straight. I've got nothing wrong with boobs. I actually love boobs. Um, but I just feel like there's a proper, pr a proper place for big bro big boobs on a character. <laughs> okay, boobs. That's all you guys ever want. Oh, that's not sculpting boobs. You're getting boobs. Look at boobs. That's all you get. And that's it. It's all done. Moving on. Again, I don't want them very big at all. As this one isn't going to say anything about our character by having big boobs. It, does not, it, it will do nothing for her character to, to talk about how she's a strong, um, kind of stoked that the, the zombie apocalypse is going on type gal. Sergeant First Class, Graham Breedlove on the trumpet. Master Sergeant Matt Neese to the composition and also the trombone solo. <laughs> they just get in the way. Perverts. Perverts. Basically, this is like the line of the nipple right here. Um, the nipple's gonna be like right there. So 
they're small, so they're not going to be pointing down. It's ridiculous how much like research you, you do on boobs. To make them look right, because you can make them look real bad. You know, I'm going to take a break. I need some water as my mouth feels like paper towels. Um, and then let's come back and let's have some fun. Have some questions. Uh, I guess that's what you can do. Okay. Be right back. Yes, booby research is very important. <laughs> Some might say it's the most important. The thing is, and she's going to be 
She's out killing zombies all day. She's the one getting in the way. Also a very important area. Now this is the hard part. Uh, let's to mold each cheek separately is that the is that weird and this is all for when I like make my final mesh that it's though with this girl you're not gonna really see her crack so I don't know why I'm worried it's like why I spend so much time with this but Ah, I created the topless blood rain image of that appeared in Playboy's magazine years ago. Girls of Gaming. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> hey, thanks for stopping by, Ashley. By the way, your stream, you, that was what you did with that time limit was just crazy. Awesome work. Okay, saved it right before it crashed. <laughs> you didn't such stripper boob.
Come on, Deuce. Oh, it's a little Z axis. Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. <laughs> Kingsley, the funny thing is I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, my wife is coming constantly, you know, like when I'm in the middle of, like, sculpting the boobs. It seems like it's inevitable. If I'm sculpting boobs, she's like, she's going to come in. And she's just gotten so used to it, she doesn't, it doesn't really bother her anymore. But she used to be like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, you know, girl character has boobs. you got to sculpt them, and you got to look at them. And <laughs> so... No symmetry. Big hand, big blue, Donnie. Welcome. Here we go. We'll fix that, okay. But inevitably, there'd be like a giant boo on my computer right when she's coming in to like say hi to me. Yeah, I think it, the concept artist is a super, like, it is super com competitive, um, as everyone kind of wants to be the, con the, the character artist, but envir there's a lot more environment opportunities, but, I mean, if that's your passion, I say go for it. But, be, but realize that you have to, like, work harder than the other you know, 30, 40 guys going for that same spot. It's really, it is a very competitive field. Oh my gosh, there we go. Um, but it also, like, is awesome. I love being a, con or a character artist.
<laughs> it shouldn't be that droopy. <laughs> Sometimes I like a droopy butt. What are we listening to? This is great. <laughs> Let's try this. If this doesn't work, then we're just going to go back to me humming. Hey, thanks for coming by, Phil. <laughs> You're just gonna be lying in bed eating Cheetos. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hard. It's hard doing stuff like that. Oh. Just making sure I have my landmarks um, still that we talked about earlier. Um, such as like the, the sternum, the eighth rib, the ASIS. Um, the pelvic bone, the, the pelvis, the patella, you can start, you know, defining where that, like, the great trochanter is going to be, so you get that kind of roll-off tier. still want that bone to be kind of sticking out just a little bit, but you know, still have a little bit of love handles. But she still has like muscle, she's not, she's not obese, she's just muscular. This may be the wrong twitch if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, Philip Stan. 
He's just going to be eating Cheetos. Let's bring in um, those references again. seeing some parts where some of my proportions are off. And the arms could be thicker and the, the hips could probably be thicker too. Yeah, and the arms need to be thicker. You're right. <laughs> I'm glad someone's digging it, Kingsley. I'm trying to like find just mellow jazz music. I like jazz music.
but it's also like pretty hit or miss when it comes to good jazz music. Trying to like identify some of the fat pockets that she would have. Um, you know, something around here. And then as it leads back into the sacrum or the sacrum, the sacrum, gosh. Yep. Yes, that's the segment summary. Exactly. So that's probably good for the block in. I'll probably just throw a quick block in on the hair. Um, just to get whew, some idea of like what that's going to be. ZBrush is awesome because you can just dynamesh things real quick and get you know more topology when you need it. Each. And even still, I'm still like thinking about, hey, this shape is going to swoop down. You know, maybe, and then shoot up here. Oh, oh, I lost my free musics. Probably good enough for the hair, like. Just get some A shape in there. And the hair is going to be the most temp part of the whole thing, so.
you know, I'm gonna do this a lot easier way than what I'm doing now. Just use this handy dandy curve brush. get it in the gist of that area. You'll be able to pull it out from there. Hey, I just discovered starting watching a skate croc today. Hey, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, Renzo. Unicorn. <laughs> yeah, basically a unicorn. Again, this is like the most temp hair that will ever be made. So, it's just to give it like some sort of shape in there. But again, I'm very like thought conscious of what shapes I'm making with this. So, it'll have like a line almost all the way from the back to the front. And this also gives a nice, like, flat um, exterior to that interior. Let's check this uh, noggin now. Just to round it off a little bit more. So she's a little square job, but not like super square job. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Kingsley. He's still like a far long ways to go from where I wanted him to be. Like, the, he's not super clean. <laughs> and, but he turned out okay, and I can be okay with that. So I think that's as far as I want to go in the um, in the block-in stage for this gal. She's got all the key landmarks uh, that I need to start going in. Um, got about 15 minutes left. She, do you guys? Uh, I don't know. If many of you are probably not here from the beginning when I talked about how to make keys for 3D printing in KeyShop. Um, I could talk about that again, or I could just keep sculpting. Either way, I'm having fun.
Keep sculpting. Cool. You got stood. So this is what I'm talking about. He's got a good S curve. You can kind of see that going all through her body. Um, start from here. Yeah, let's get rid of these arms for a second. Just taking out like the curves. This is the stuff that I'm talking about when I'm looking at overall balance and gesture in the silhouette. And you're getting this curve all the way down. That's, and there's just so much appeal in that, like these big um, counterbalancing points. Yeah, even the front's got it too. You got from the head down, and this has got to be, that's got to be lower, um, but it's even got that. You know, that balance in the front too while still keeping the balance of curves and flats. So flat mostly, curve is all happening here. Um, the same will happen here. This will be, try to take down that detail. I do that a lot. I look, I look at flat mode quite a bit, make sure that like even the planes of the breast look really nice and appealing right now. She's got good, this will be cleaned up, you know, it's a little bit too rigid, but I like where that's going. Is she reading is like thick, and I think she's as muscular, like thick and muscular. Yeah. Um, oh, look at this. Keep scolding. Oh yeah, this has been a fun one. So hopefully this, this is what I'm focusing on for this month, is we'll do this girl. Um, hopefully just do the whole thing um, together and and she should be good. High points of each curve are offset, and that's what that's what I'm trying to go for. So now I have the high point inside and then it angles and the high point's gonna be there. So there's a nice diagonal of high points. Um, same with the thigh, like we've got the high point here, high point there. Just kind of do this zigzag through the thigh. Little bitty balances. 
high point here. I think we might. Yeah, we still want that. Oh, look. Look at this. More questions. Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh. Nightbot. Yield so and so. Um. Do I use the transpose tool as well? I use the transpose tool all the time. Um, I don't use it very much in block in, but like as soon as I start, you know, giving some more detail to these arms, like I'll quickly, you know, mask these out, and then just, you know, bend and move them just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more personality in the T pose. Um, did I get things sort of like poor with, yes, yes I did, um, and it turns out, I'm just going to post this, this, <laughs> rather than me explain everything, it'll be better if I just do, just post what I wrote. This is what happens. So everything's okay. Basically, um, we found it. It was hidden in our yard, uh, in the backyard, very, very well. And so, yes. <laughs> Yeah, Renzor, that's, I mean, that's the way to do it, is just soak it up. I have a noob question. Yes, there's no noob questions. I'm trying to use, um, trying to use in the last time spotlight to pin reference. The reason I cannot sculpt unless I'm doing. Ah, so this is what you need to do. So you can't sculpt or you can't, some things won't work correctly if you have, um, the spotlight Reference turned on, make sure you go to brush. This is on by default. Brush, samples, turn this off. Turn spotlight projection off, and then you can sculpt like normal. Um, that's the only thing you need to change, and you'll be, you'll, everything will work like a dream. You keep your reference up. Yeah, no problem. Let's add some ears on her. A couple of things I need to just block in with the face. Why not? is here. This is not an ear.
give them an angle to follow the jaw. One other thing before I do anything else with the ears, I'm actually going to use the Z Modeler brush to add in just this little detail here. Um, the Z Modeler brush is the best thing ever though. Let's get that out in the open. Oops. trying to snap to the hidden geometry, that's what's going on. I'm just making this little thing behind the ear. I don't know if it's even big enough. Oh yeah. So the cool thing is I can just block in like some of the stuff that I would sculpt um, in the ear. And I can just block it in. And then sculpt the rest, you know, dynamite everything and sculpt the rest later. Ooh, there's all these things going on. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you start with the face when you go when you go in or all around sculpt? Yeah, I, I normally start with the face. Um, like after I block out the body like this, uh, I'll normally start with the face, detailing the face, getting that feeling right, like the attitude for it, and then I'll go in and do the rest of the body. But I. But before I do the face, I want to make sure my proportions are correct, that the shape language that I'm having is the right feeling for the character. Um, so but, so that, those are the key things. I, I want to get the proportions for the whole character first, and then I'll move on to the face and the smaller details. Um, actually, where do you mean... Where do you find the spotlight tool? It is hit Z. Z in that little, if you hit Z, Renzor, um, pops right up, and there's a bunch of different options. Go to Z Classroom to learn more about that. Um, to load in images to it, just click on an imported image, and then hit this plus add to spotlight. And then you toggle it on and off with Z. Um, oh, good, Kenshi. Well, I guess I gotta <laughs> wake up and do some Z rush before university. How strange is it to see? Yes, that's that's the great thing about this is like these uh, Z rush lives like just make you want to sculpt. Um, that's all I've wanted to do. Do an auto group. And some of this stuff, like I'm already going to start paying attention to thick and thins. Start pulling this up. You don't want any parallels. No parallels. Okay. 
and the music stopped so I will play it with my mouth let's see more questions um Missing one. That'd be cool, actually, can she? I don't know. I don't know where you could post them up, but that'd be cool. Norway. Hey, thanks for joining us, Norway. That's awesome. Oh, cool. Yeah, that first video that Joseph and Paul put together, or demo that they did, was like, it was so full of knowledge. <laughs> I'm gonna push some of this in. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. You know, I think that's my time for the week. So, um, again, this is the girl that I'll be sculpting. Let's let's pull her up. So this is this is the end goal that we'll be sculpting. Um, so next week we'll be going over the details of the face and blocking out the clothes. Um, should be pretty fun. So go ahead, join us. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Um, you guys are awesome. <laughs> so if you have any questions, ask Kingsley. He knows all, and or Kyle, and Kyle will lie to you. <laughs> he won't. <laughs> um, but this is great. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. I'm gonna sign out. Have a good week.